thank you for coming here. Thank you for being here. Good to be here. <laughs> yeah. At our little Rockavaria rock antenna interview bus station. There's a lot happening in a small place. <laughs> I can yeah, see that. Uh, the cocktails we're gonna be, you know, giving out after your show. So you all right. Know, so it doesn't interfere with your performance. <laughs> it wouldn't. <laughs> so tell me, um, what's better? Is it better to play a headliner shows in the venues that you played, like in in wintertime, or is it better to play open airs when you headline as well? Well, <laughs> I think they both have their advantages. Yeah. I mean, when you play on a big festivals, you really get the uh, mass rapture, so to say. I mean, when you see 40,000 hands in the air, everybody shouting, it's a massive feeling you can't get anywhere else. Mm. But then again, when you have the more intimate shows, for example, in North America, we play in clubs, yeah. and uh, you really get to see the people in front row. There's the slime, there's the sweat, and there's the intimate feeling. I really, really enjoy that as well. So it's the best of both worlds. Is it um, for you? Um, when, you, when you play open airs, do you change your set list, or do you go like, no, we're gonna go stick to the program, or what do you do? Usually, usually we take a few songs off because the set lists are shorter here. Are you taking the longer songs off? <laughs> Actually, well, there's one. <laughs> it's still 90 minutes, so we're playing the long songs. <laughs> Just because we love playing long songs. Yeah. And the audience seems to be enjoying them as well. But then when you have like 60 minute set, you have to take. The greatest show on earth, for yeah. example, of so it's a matter of making adjustments here and there. You know, whether you play the stadium or you play a club or a venue, uh, do you still get excited? Do you still get a little bit nervous before the show? Because you don't, you, you mm. never seem to be, you know, just to be honest. You go on stage and you're like, okay. Um, back in the days, I used to be death scared of going on stage constantly for years and years. I used to. What were you scared of? Just That's a good question. A making a mistake? Or? Not really. I've never been afraid of making a mistake. That doesn't really matter. Mm. As long as you have the passion of playing, mistakes don't mean anything. I really think so. But it was just something. You know, I've never been comfortable around a lot of people being the center of attention all that. So I had the worst stage right <laughs> in the world. Yeah. But then it all kind of vanished about seven years ago. And I've never been afraid of going on stage ever since. Excited, yes, and I still get the vibe almost every time. But isn't it a disadvantage being alcoholic then just to get on stage? No, I'm sorry, I'm just joking. You have to ask an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Endless Forms most beautiful. Mm. It's been around now for a while, you've been touring with the record for a while. Is, is it already like a certain distance where you can say, where you can evaluate the record now from a certain distance? Is it, is it that far away that long ago? Um, I bet it would, but I haven't actually listened to the CD from beginning to the end mm -hmm. since the mastering process 15 months ago. <laughs> okay. So actually that's a good idea. Maybe at some point I'll listen to it with a fresh ears. Yeah, because sometimes mm. bands say, you know, after a while, after one and a half years or so, they say like, oh, we could have done, you know, we could have arranged. Well, I bet there are some of those things, but, uh, you know, it's... It's, I think it's a waste of time of going through those things. I would just enjoy the experience of listening to the album from okay. beginning to the end because there's nothing we can do about it anymore. Okay. <laughs> and at some point you just have to let go. And that's what we have done with all of the albums. It's funny that you said that you're not afraid of making mistakes on stage because, you know, I, we never talked and I don't really know you, but as looking at you from an outside, I would say that you are a real, real, real 100% perfectionist of whatever you do. Um, I mean, just composing stuff and everything. So, uh, Yeah, I used to be... I mean, perfectionism is a term that's often misunderstood. <laughs> and I think perfectionism actually is a vice, not a virtue. Mm -hmm. It's more like an obsession, yeah. which is not a good thing. But uh, trying your best and working really hard and really, really trying your best. If that's perfectionism, then yeah, we all are. But um, when it goes to you the just talk about yourself, not, not us here. <laughs> Speaking for the whole band, actually. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't consider myself as a perfectionist okay. in such sense. Okay. Uh, there's one thing I gotta ask you because I was I was I didn't mm -hmm. see coming when you did Scrooge McDuck. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know it was coming, so I was more surprised. You know, I was like, what the, f what the hell? Do you know the German word for for Scrooge McDuck? Uh, yeah, um, Onkel Dagobert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, exactly. It's funny. Yeah, well, um, you can 
just guess the response from the North Americans and the British because Scrooge McDuck is nothing in those countries. It's not a big thing. Yeah. And uh, for us Europeans, especially Scandinavians, it's huge and people kind of understood why I would do this kind of project. Mm -hmm. But the Americans didn't get it at all. I mean, DuckTales, what the hell? What, why are you doing what? Yeah, but I think it, I Same think with it's, the British. it's also something like uh, you have to be, you have to grow up with it. You know, like sure. like in our age, I think everybody grew up with those comics, and so and so maybe maybe that's why. Majority of the stuff that you enjoy now comes from your childhood. What you really liked as a kid, you still like, and uh, there's the nostalgia touch attached yeah. to all those things. So it's only natural. Yeah, that's and true. I grew up with that stuff since I was two, and I'm still a fan to the extent that I ended up doing an album about his life. Yeah, no, that's, mm. that's really cool, but I was like, I, I, I was just wondering if you knew the German word, it's, it's cool. Okay, yeah. Um, well, you know, uh, you got everything set up, you're gonna be touring, you're gonna do festivals. I heard there's a break, uh, break coming up for the band. Yeah, this tour is gonna last until mid-October. This year we have the festival season. Today's the first show of the festival season. Ooh, okay. Then a few shows in September around Europe, um, followed by Japan in Loud Park. And that's a wrap then for a little while. Okay. We already have some plans for 2018, but uh, absolutely nothing will happen in 2017. Uh, come on, you, you have something in the back of your mind doing something, right? In 2017? Yeah. Absolutely do, but nothing with the band. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I'm curious, you know. Curi yeah. Something will come up. Um, mainly just being at home, mm. being able to spend a year at home, um, taking care of the garden and the horse, do a bit of traveling, and um, now you haven't traveled enough. Now, <laughs> have, have you? <laughs> I guess not. There's still a few places I'd like to visit, but yeah, staying at home in peace and quiet that's the part that i wait the most mm. maybe do a bit of songwriting if i feel like that but no pressure <laughs> yeah. uh, it seems that uh, nightwish you know after after all those years uh, with floor it seems like a really really strong unit and and you know just you know focusing on the unit part mm. uh, yeah. correct i would think so yeah the first time she ga came into the rehearsal room when we started to play the new songs she already knew all the songs by heart from the demo that I had made. Mm -hmm. So I really haven't seen that kind of dedication and motivation before. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, she really is born for this, what she does. Mm -hmm. And it's a pleasure mm -hmm. working with her. It so really is. Yeah. Um, Rock of Area is something, you know, I've never been. I'm, I'm here the first time. You're probably here the first time. We're the first time, time yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the stadium? I went there last night at dusk. Looked beautiful. Okay. Yeah, I was just watching them putting the stage together and setting the PA and all that, having a little drinky winky there, and uh, <laughs> just just a lovely evening. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a good party. Good. Good. Yeah. Well, everything's set then. I have no further questions. I guess. Is there something I forgot to ask you? No. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> rock Antenna. 100% rock. Non-stop. Wenn euch das Video gefallen hat, dann könnt ihr hier alle anderen Rockavaria Videos sehen, Interviews und was wir sonst noch alles gemacht haben. Und hier unten geht es zu allen anderen Rockantenne Sachen, die wir so verbrechen, wenn wir nicht bei Rockavaria sind. Viel Spaß dabei und vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen, wenn euch das gefallen hat. Generell gebt unserem Kanal ein Like. Du bist noch ein Bild. Jetzt bist du nicht mehr ein Bild. <lacht>